Alright guys, today we're going to go through how to map a watershed. I went through this exercise with Team 4 uh, during a team meeting and um, I was second guessing myself over there and I come to the conclusion I'm just going to go with my gut on this one and I uh, challenge any one of you guys to re-delineate this watershed map and um, prove me wrong I guess. Um, but after looking it over and over, I just feel that this is the best way to delineate it. So I want to go through this because it's important that you guys delineate the watershed correctly. Otherwise, the amount of CFS that you come up with after you figure out the amount of acres um, would can drastically change your design. So I have three dots on this map. This map is out of uh, Mountain, Mountain Air. There's one dot. Here's another dot, and here's another dot. So those are the points of interest. We're going to start with the, the easy one first, the easy ones. There's two of them. And I'm just going to trace what I already have traced with pen so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, so this po the first point is this one. We're just going to pretend that we have a home here that we want to put a diversion upstream of it. And so to be able to size the diversion for this, to, to divert the water away from this house, we've got to delineate the watershed and how much water or acres we have area. And then there's a um, CFS that correlates to that. And you can just follow my Hydrology Chapter 2 YouTube video to figure out how to do that. At this point, I just want to delineate the watershed. So from this point, all I'm going to do is trace my my line, I'm going to go from the red, I'm not going to go perpendicular, so perpendicular is just, there's the contour, going perpendicular to it, everywhere there's a contour I'm going to go perpendicular, so up here, perpendicular, there's a little nub right here, a little mole, perpendicular all the way, and then I get to the top of the watershed, and then there's another little knoll. And, um, once again, going just going perpendicular to all the contours. And then now we're coming back down the drainage. All perpendicular. Hope that makes sense. I'm just going to explain it a little bit better. So this contour is going like this. My line is going to go perpendicular to it. All the way till I'm down here. So there's the first watershed. And if you want to figure out that ac that acreage, all you got to do is go on ArcMap, delineate the same thing with your your line tool, and then click the polygon that you that's created out of that, and then you'll be able to figure out the amount of acres. So we'll go do the other one. This is the other easy one. This is the our house. We want to put a diversion upstream of it, so. We're going to start from here, I'm going to go up perpendicular to this contour, straight through it, up perpendicular, perpendicular, so on and forth, so forth. Then we get to the top of this mesa up here. Um, you can tell there's a mesa just because it's all flat here, and on either side you got drainage, and then on this side it's sloping away from it. So on top of the mesa we have a couple, one, two, three, four five little little uh, nubs or hills we're going to go up those hills up those hills perpendicular there's another nub perpendicular and then we're going to go start going down the stream um, down perpendicular perpendicular and there we're at so then you can figure that amount of acreage on ArcMap. Now the hard one is the one that we were having some discussion at the uh, Team 4 meeting and I'm going to stick to what I had originally just except for a minor little um, change. Tommy Casado has brought up a good point um, on how he would delineate it and I'm going to agree with him on that. Um, I'll explain what I what I was in disagreement with 
as I delineate the map. So this one's a big watershed. You can see my line. I'll just quickly trace it. Much bigger than the other ones. So starting from the point of interest or the house that needs a diversion built up from it, we're just going to go perpendicular to all the contours. You can just see how I went perpendicular. And then we get to a little hill. I'm going to go up the hill and then across it. Keep on going up, keep on going up. Water is following this way. You can just see water, if it would travel, would travel right here. So I'm just going, keep on going perpendicular to all the contours, and then I get to, to this top part. This is the part where I was questioned, but I, I'm, I feel confident in, in my original delineation, which is this. So you have elevation drop this way, so water is going to fall this way, and water is going to fall this way. I'm worried about the water falling this way. So I'm, uh, originally we were thinking that maybe we had the uh, topog map would have to go this way, or the delineation. But it was due to the fact that we had some poor maps in my printout for Team 4 that we were a little bit confused. But I'm going to stick to my guns on this one, and we're going to go across. This is basically the top part of a, a little mesa. And then we're going to go down into a little saddle right here. And finally we're going to go up, there's a high point. Once again, water is going to be going this way. And you can just see, here's a little stream. So keep on going perpendicular, a little nub, down, across, perpendicular. There's a little nub, a little nub, go through all those. We made up with this watershed that we already delineated. So I'm just going to keep on going with the top part of this mesa right here. And then from here, I'm going to start going up. This gets a little confusing here because you have a couple of mountain ranges. So I just went up perpendicular, and then I started going perpendicular up this mount, mountain range, this little, this little peak. Perpendicular is a nub, going through that, another nub, went through that. And then there's a saddle. So I went through the saddle down. And then this one, there's probably room for interpretation, but I just did my best judgment. Water is coming down this mountain, so I want to capture all that in there. So I went up the side of the Pino, Pino Mountain, went up to the top of the peak. There's the topmost peak part of it. And then I went across the, the whole peak. Like water is flowing this way, you can just see. So I don't need to capture this because this can be part of this drainage. And then I'm going to go across the, the range, another little saddle, and then there's another little nub. I'm going to go up that nub perpendicular, go across it, another saddle, up the nub, and then start my, my way down the drainage perpendicular. And this is where Tommy Casados pointed out that it'd probably be best to go through here than originally I was thinking right through here. But that doesn't make sense because the drainage is right here. So I was mistaken there. So thank you, Tommy, for correcting me on that. So we're going to keep on going here, up the drainage. There's This is this is a little nub here, and then let's run a saddle across. And then across this drainage, or I mean, sorry, this uh, top part of the flat spot. And then we're going to start going down. Now, if I were to follow water from this point, you can just see that it's going to fall down here into this drainage. We're not worried about this drainage. We're worried about this point over here. So that's why I kept going and capturing this drainage over here. And then we want to cross a little mesa. Now we're going down, down, down all the way across to our point of interest. So some of you might say, well, how come we didn't capture this area right here? Well, our point is on this drainage, not on this drainage. If I had moved this right here, let's just say I had a dot right here instead, 
and I'd have to ca capture all of this right here perpendicular perpendicular and then I'd meet up right there so you can tell that this area right here versus this area right here 